Hi guys, this is Jason and I'm here with the unboxing of the Asus ROG Phone 6. We're lucky enough to have the ROG Phone 6 Pro version with a crazy 18 gigs of RAM and at the same time with a superb packaging. To me, it reminds me of the Gundam anime series or many other robot based series like if you know Escaflown, for example, that's one idea. Usually, a character sneaks into the chest of a robot and that's the vibe I'm getting here when unboxing the phone. Okay, so we also have some accessories in this video. I'm going to show you the unboxing and the first accessory we have is the Aeroactive cooler. The phone was just launched. In our region it should be priced at around 1200 euros or something like that. Once again this is the top version, the most powerful of them all, the Asus ROG phone 6 pro with this special extra screen at the back side the pmoled screen and this extra lighting area here which shines and says there to play also with a brand new camera design compared to the predecessor okay so it's already been set up by me i also done some benchmarks if you're curious i'm going to fire it up and then show you what's inside the box so 18 gigs of RAM, uh, ASUS is also moving to 165Hz refresh rate and this is our first contact with a new processor, Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1. Some interface changes as well, particularly in the Game Genie area and even in the Armory section. Okay, so uh, I'm going to put this to the side for now, we'll be back with more later, but in the meantime you can see this screen being activated only slightly. So it's an unboxing, so let's see what's inside the box. Let's start with this one, where ASUS provides a key, used to access the slots, only nano sims, we don't have microSD here. What we do have is a very brief manual for this gaming phone which shows by the way that we have an extra USB-C port on the side to keep things comfortable comfortable when you're gaming and charging the phone simultaneously. Now we have a bundled case here for both protection and aesthetic reasons it lets the screen shine through this area here the extra back screen and also the shiny piece which says there to play. However there's more this little mechanism here triggers an AR game, you saw that last year, we'll also maybe try it out, pretty curious about it. And we have a hefty charger here, let's try and remove it properly. This big charger promises us up to, let's see, 65 watts charging, it has an USB-C connector and a cable to match. The cable goes from USB-C to USB-C and it's braided, tougher than usual and quite long. I'll be honest, uh, I'm still keeping some of the cables from the previous ROG phones. Uh, I'm actually using them, a quick tip for you. I'm using a ROG phone 2 cable and have been using it for a while to charge laptops and it's pretty solid. Okay, that's about it in the box. Uh, not sure if there's anything else, I'll keep digging. You probably know that ASUS is fond of uh, Easter eggs, so there may be or may not be one here. Okay, so putting the box aside for now, let's focus on the phone. Obviously, it's built of glass and metal. And uh, you can do the tweaks as far as the screen is concerned and any animation here in the dedicated section, which is this one here, the armory. Okay, so we have the game library here, the games we have installed. And in the feature games department, you're going to get some recommendations, which also depend on your refresh rate, as you can see here. This is the section for the games. This is the main console which shows you the degrees of the phone, the CPU, GPU, the megahertz and uh, the gigabytes of memory used, both storage and RAM. These are the main profiles, you can switch to the Crazy X mode for an extra plus of performance, dynamic or ultra durable, if you're all about the battery life. You can actually edit the sub settings of each mode. There's quite a bit to tweak for each of the modes, including sliding sensitivity, touch sensitivity and more. The dynamic one can also be tweaked and the ultra durable as well with the edit option from here.
which is nice to see. As you can see, I'm navigating with gestures and I started off with this area because I want to show you how these parts light up. So this is the rock vision. The rock vision is basically the screen, the secondary screen at the back of the phone. You can see this animation playing when the screen is on. We have the X mode animation. We have the external accessory animation and we have the charging animation plus game start and incoming call. That's what it does. That's what it shows. Okay, so the current mood is screen on, this one here. Uh, then we have the system lighting, which I, which I just activated, or I should be able to activate, hopefully. Uh, lighting is turned off due to schedules. Interesting. So if it's set to be off during the time of the day, it won't activate, but now it's activated and can be tweaked from here. Okay. These are some of the conditions where it lights up. You can actually edit its color. So right now it's red, there to play. I can go with green, just change it. And of course I can make it strobe and uh, change in a variety of other modes. And it can activate for notifications, games, and much more. This is the Aero Active Cooler, which we'll talk about a bit later. And I think it's time to also show you some other areas. This is the socializing portion of the armory. This is the featured game section and this is my own profile. Now, back to the actual phone. It's made of glass and metal and it's quite a beefy machine. Uh, the Pro version is only available in Storm White. It measures 10.3 millimeters in thickness and weighs a hefty 239 grams. One gram shy of being as heavy as the iPhone 13 Pro Max. Asus claims that it's inspired by spaceships and the way they take off from an imaginary space station. Uh, and we also have here the ROG Vision design for the PMOLED screen at the back side. And uh, we have 60 new animations in total to play with. Now, there's Gorilla Glass 3 for the back side and Gorilla Glass Victus for the protection of the front side. Now, a friend of mine saw the phone and complained that the bezels were quite thick. Well, for gaming, actually bezels don't matter that much. Uh, in this case, bigger is actually better, so you can rest your thumbs here when gaming, so keep that in mind. It's got a comfy landscape usage, I give you that much, after playing some games on it. And it even has IP certification, even though we're only talking about IPX4. Now the screen, which you're seeing right here, uh, with this one is a 6.78 inch panel, of course, of the AMOLED variety. Uh, with a resolution of 2448 over 1080 pixels, people may want 2K in the future. 165 Hz is welcome, 1 millisecond response time, HDR10+, and 720 Hz touch sampling rate. There's a 23 millisecond touch latency here. There's eye care, protecting your eyes from that intense uh, blue light. And even something called friction protection for sweat. So if you're sweating a lot during gameplay, will be protected by that special system. Now inside the phone, as I said before, this is our very first contact with a Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 3.2 GHz chip. Basically it, being, it brings a 10% uh, increase in performance from the predecessor, Snapdragon 8 Gen 1, and a 30% in uh, energy efficiency. It's still a 4 nanometer chip, but it's produced by TSMC, uh, no longer Samsung. As you can see, we have 18 gigs of RAM and 512 gigabytes of storage space here. And uh, let's turn up the brightness a little bit. Uh, we're talking about LPDDR5 for the RAM and UFS 3.1 for the storage. Now, as far as the battery is concerned, ever since the ROG Phone 2, we've been using a 6000 mAh battery with 65 watt charging. It's actually split into two smaller cells, dual 3000 mAh batteries, and uh, we also have NTFS support for external storage. Keep that in mind. As usual for an ASUS gaming phone, the ROG phone, we have dual stereo speakers. You can see the slit here for the top speaker and another slit here for the bottom speaker. They're front oriented so the sound can get to you properly. There's also a three microphone system, although they're pretty well hidden. I can definitely see one here between the power button and the volume buttons. Also one here, so two microphones so far. And uh, there should be one more. It's this one at the top side in the antenna cutout. So 
three microphone system with Ozo technology, which will capture your voice during streaming. Now, there is also a bit of coverage happening here when it comes to connectivity. We're getting Wi-Fi 6E, 5G. Uh, we also have three antennas for the Wi-Fi 6E. There's Bluetooth 5.2, GPS, GLONASS, Galileo, Beidou, QZSS, Navic, the USB-C, keep in mind, uh, this is actually USB-C 2.0 at the bottom. This is the USB-C 3.1 on the side with support for Display Point, uh, Display Port 1.4. It outputs 4K signal to a monitor with ease. We also have the audio jack, uh, reminiscence of the past, but some people may have badass headphones to use it with. NFC is also supported here. Okay, so uh, let's also bring this little fellow here as I talk about other features. Now, the camera may not be as important for some people, but it's here. So the phone provides you with a 12 megapixel Sony sensor front camera with an IMX663 sensor and that's uh, placed here. It's not cut in the screen in a punch hole. It's placed at the top side of the screen, which you can see here quite close to the slit for the speaker. So 12 megapixel. On the back side, we have a brand new camera design. You can see here a nifty ring around the main camera. It's a 50 megapixel shooter with a Sony sensor. Then we have a 13 megapixel shooter ultra wide and a macro camera with an unspecified resolution. I'm guessing it's two megapixels. Dual LED flash and 8K 24 frames per second capture. Not going to insist too much on the camera, but what I'm going to insist on is the brand new Aero Active Cooler 6. This one I haven't tested. Usually I do a pre-trial run on the products I show you to not make a fool of myself, but this one I'm willing to take a risk on. And the risk is already being risky as I struggle to open it. Uh, you can definitely forget about the previous uh, Aeroactive coolers. This is in a whole different league. This is a whole different ball game. It's much bigger and much more prominent. Uh, Asus really went all out with this one. I'm wondering if I actually am required to use the case to attach it. I'm going to give it a go nevertheless and try to see if it works without it. Okay, so attach air active cooler. Insert the port at the bottom of the air active cooler into the side mounted top. Then push the top of the air active cooler down to securely attach it. Okay, I think we're about done. We have some indications here. Once again, this is my first time. I didn't do a trial run. And this is how you detach it. Good to know. I can already feel the coolness coming out of it. And it's beautifully lit pattern. It's definitely something else. It's about three times the size of the predecessor, if not more. I would say even four or five times. And you can hear it's quite loud if you go closer to my microphone. But it's a joy to look at. However, let's see if it bothers my hands when gaming. So, if you're holding the device like this, there's no problem. But if you're a closer gamer like this, there may be a problem. It's quite, quite big. But also, it should decrease the temperature by quite a margin. There's stock of even 10 degrees Celsius or maybe even 20 degrees Celsius, which is pretty, pretty impressive. Of course, it comes with its very own options in the armory section, which... I'm guessing have already been triggered. So if you go here, aside from the whole AR triggers thing, so let's see. System lighting and here we go. This is the cooler temperature and this is the system temperature. And we can play with much more settings. Smart mode, cool mode, frosty mode, and the uh, lighting controls and so forth. Okay, so I'm going to leave it on. I'm still pretty impressed by how nice it looks and how uh, well it attaches. Uh, it's not no longer finicky as some of the predecessors were. It makes the device a bit heavier. We also have these tactile areas here. So there's this one here, which you can use to trigger certain modes, but also these ones, which you can use for shooters that are customizable trigger buttons. So if I were to start a game, you would definitely be meeting with the other part of the gaming experience. And speaking of which, uh, we are running here on Android 12 with a custom ROG UI on top, but you can also select the Zen UI from ASUS if you want a more stock experience. The buttons here, the trigger buttons, have received new gestures. There's press and lift. We also have gyroscope aiming and much more.
And if you are going to do a pull down gesture from here, this is the brand new game Genie area, which looks better than before. You can see here refresh rate, real time info, network switch, navigation, edge tool, speed up, air triggers, lock touch and so much more. Uh, this edge tool is basically a um, shorter version of this one. So I'm sure you can actually pull it up, trying to get accustomed to it to see more options. So you can activate the X mode, for example, from here and you can associate the air triggers to various parts of the screen. We got the ultrasonic buttons, we got the motion control. Yes, we have that. It's inspired by consoles, definitely. We have the cooler buttons, believe it or not. The cooler comes with its own buttons here, trigger buttons. Actually more of them, there's four of them. That's pretty nice to see. And uh, well, that's about it. We have a lot to unpack here with this device and uh, we have uh, even more accessories available with it to play with. Okay, and I also promised you that AR thing, didn't forget it. So let's see it quickly if I can find where it actually is situated. Okay, so AR mission, let's go. Okay, welcome, enter the city. Last year there was something inspired by Akira. Let's actually hear it. Okay, get ready to scan the card. Okay, so I think I'm going to have to tap the triggers. That's good. By the way, this little critter actually reminded me of something. Aside from the X mode, you also have the X mode plus, which is activated with the cooler. And it makes the device even cooler and more powerful because it benefits from the extra airflow. Okay, so that's pretty cool. Okay, so this has been one of the longest unboxings I've ever did. This is the ROG Phone 6 Pro with 18 gigs of RAM, the brand new Snapdragon CPU. Uh, quite a few accessories, useful ones. I'm loving the new Aero Cooler, but it's quite huge. I'm not sure if it's to anybody, everybody's liking. I love the new buttons and the new motion controls. And I have some great expectations from the camera. I'm also advised to create an avatar now. Okay, and here we go. I should have kept my previous nickname from last year, from the ROG Phone 5, but I guess this one will do. So this has been the unboxing of the ASUS ROG uh, 6 Pro. We'll be back with a full review in due time. And maybe also a video of the other accessories. We have the Kunai and some cases and more. Goodbye.